Okay, maybe that intro was a bit dramatic, but it does illustrate a real fear that beginners have when using a new piece of software. In this video, we're going to talk about how to get over that fear. But first, yes, I am using the Godot engine. And before we start the holy war of game engines, just know I have nothing against all the other game engines. The Godot engine just felt right when I was playing around with it. it felt comfortable, lightweight, and it should be everything I need in order to make this 2D game. When I make my other mini games, we might use the other engines and mess around with those. But for now, we'll be using the Godot engine. So when starting a new project in a new piece of software, it can be a very daunting task. For me, I always think of when I first tried to learn Blender. Uh, he's just standing there, menacingly! Every time I opened the piece of software and that little cube was just standing there looking at me, I was just overwhelmed by the amount of options I had at my disposal. I wasn't sure where to get started. Um, and then I would basically, you know, mess around with the software for a little bit and then I would close out the software and I wouldn't touch it for another three months. Later I would do the same thing, I would open it up, I wouldn't know where to start, I would tinker around for a bit and then I would close it again. So one way to learn a new piece of software is to do tutorials and that does work for some people. However, you do need to be careful that a lot of people just get stuck looking at tutorial after tutorial and they never really get around to making their own stuff. Um, for me, when I used tutorials, it never really worked for me because I wasn't really personally invested in the stuff I was making in the tutorials. And so I'd end up getting bored and quitting halfway through. So for this video, we're going to talk about a different way that I use when it comes to learning a new piece of software. So what's helpful for me is to pick a task and to figure out how to do that simple task. So for example, if we're making a video game, we can split that into different parts. And then for all those different parts, we can split them further into other parts. So basically our player boils down to being a sprite and then that sprite needs to move so we need a script so then i would go to the internet and figure out how to make a sprite move and i would start from there and slowly after split doing task after task these really simple things that's when i start to learn that piece of software so enough just sitting around and talking about it let's put these things to practice and make our first game so first of all we're going to make a basic uh, character controller. So this will handle, we basically got the sprite object and we're telling it what to do when we press left, right, up and down. So we will give that a try and see what we've got. Basically using this Godot sprite and look at that. We are now able to move and rotate. So a sprite node isn't going to give us all the functionality we want. Instead for our player, we're going to need an area 2D node. And this basically is comprised of a the player, which is the area 2D. And then under that, there's a sprite and a collision shape 2D. And we've got our stage, which is comprised of a sprite and a collision shape 2D. That's also an area 2D. We've then got the arrow, which is a sprite collision shape 2D. And then there's also a visibility notifier 2D, which we're gonna use to tell the game when to get rid of the sprites once it's hit the stage. Um, so here is our new character controller, a little bit more involved. So in the previous, when we were just messing around with the program, we had left, right, and rotate, or up, down, and then rotate. But now we're going to move left and right. And then we've got to set a speed based on the different direction we're going. And then we need to prevent our player from going off screen. So to do that, we're gonna use this clamp function to make sure that we don't leave the screen. The arrow's got a timer. And then when it times out, it basically spawns another arrow on the arrow path. So this kind of creates that random spawn of the arrows falling from the sky. 
And then that visibility notifier tells the game when the arrow has hit the stage and then it frees that game object. So here we are, we've got our first playable version of the game and we've got arrows falling and we're able to control our character but nothing more happens or there's nothing more to the game than this at this point. So now we're going to add a game over screen when we get hit. So the way that works is that when a shape enters our player body, it starts a death timer. And when that death timer times out, it sends us to the game over screen. And then when the game over screen comes up, it has another timer that tells how long that screen needs to stay. And then it goes back and restarts us at the level one. So now we have to add a level timer so the player knows how long they need to survive to get to the next level. Uh, what's going on here? So here's how our timer is created. We basically have a couple of containers which have some text in, inside them. And then we get the current time. And then we print that time. Turns out the issue we had before is because I was just printing the text of the time directly. But instead, make it not jitter, we have to format the output of that time. And once we do that, the timer looks nice we've got a working level timer. Now we need to make it so that when our timer gets to zero, it puts us on to the next level. So this is done by a signal that when our level timer times out, we basically get the scene tree, so we have access to everything in the tree, and then we change scene to the winner scene. So now we've got it to where when we get hit by an arrow, there's a visual indicator that we've been hit, we lose a life, and then there's also some iframes being shown every time we get hit by an arrow. And then once we lose all our three lives, we get a game over. So, so this is done by signal when we get hit, checks the shell count, and if we're not at zero, then it sets the opacity of that shell to make it transparent. So every time a shape enters our player's collision body shape, then we decrease our shell count. And if our shell count's zero, then we start the death timer. If not, we emit a signal that the player is hit, and every time the player is hit, it decreases our shell count. If we are at zero, the death timer starts, and every time we are hit, we also start a iframe timer, and so this is kind of what gives us that visual look that we are in iframes by blinking. So this is done by just toggling the visible on and off. So now that we've got the arrows working and the timer working, our game needs an enemy. Well, looks like a, our enemy isn't doing anything when we touch it. So let's see if we can fix that. So inside of our player area, shape entered signal handler. We check the area that touches us. And if it is the enemy, then we basically do what we did with the arrows is that we start our death timer if we're at shell count zero. If not, we we emit the signal player hit. We do the same thing as before. Now that that's been done, if we touch our enemy right here, then it activates the iframes, decreases one of our shells, and gives us a game over. So now we need to add some code to make our enemy move. So based on whether the player is to our left or right, we set our velocity to go left or right when we spawn in. And then I basically got some preset positions for our enemy on whether or not it comes in on the left, it'll just be barely off the screen or whether it comes in on the right. So then we've got a enemy timer and this basically tells the game when the enemy should come in. And this value can change per level. So on the harder levels, more enemies will come in. On the easier levels, less enemies will come in. So if everything worked right, we should have an enemy. Yep, looks like we're moving. The enemy's coming at us. And it hits us, and it still works. Now we play the runaway game. But now we're just kind of defenseless here. So our player is currently defenseless against these enemies. So... Let's give him a sword. Now the sword currently does nothing, so we need to fix that. Now we add another thing to our character controller, so if we press the space bar, we play the sword enemy. But when our sword animation finishes, we reset it to our normal position, 
is called reset. And then we need to detect for the enemy that when the enemy gets hit by the sword, that the enemy needs to die. So in this view, you've got these little boxes around. This is basically an option you can set in Godot to see your collision shapes. You've noticed that in front of our player, there is a collision shape where the sword will be when the animation plays. Currently that shape is red, which means that it will not affect the player. But once we hit our sword button, that then changes to blue, which means that it has a collision shape and it kills our enemy. So now I've added a little bit of additional text to see which level we're at. And we basically at this point got a working prototype. As you can see, I've also added the power up for the game. So this grants the character some additional speed for a limited time. So this is where we're going to end it for this video. In the next video, we will take our simple prototype and make it look a lot better. So if you're interested in that, please subscribe to the channel and I'll see you on the next video.